Well lang guys, ha? hindi ko alam nangyari dito yung Yay, yay, yay Ba't ganun yung internet ko dito Hmm Ayan, okay na, ito na, ito na, ito na guys Live na tayo, finally I don't know kung makakat it or hindi Ay nako talaga, ang connection talaga dito uh, uh, Anyway, uh, Happy New Year everyone I hope uh, you had a wonderful time with your family and loved ones Ayan, pagod pa ako Ano eh, dami natin mga ano Mga hinag, mga binuhat, mga Mga ating mga minamahal sa buhay, si Lola, si Daddy, yan. Lahat ng mga minamahal natin, hinag natin ng sobrang hikpit, yan. I'm super thankful ako to the Lord for giving us the opportunity to celebrate uh, another um, milestone in the sense of, you know, getting into a new year, surviving all the challenges, uh, ups and downs throughout the year in 2023, alam ko, Uh, hindi tayo nag in terms of dealing with a lot of challenges, of course, uh, a lot of worries. As you know, of course, a few months ago, yung ating minamahal na Lola was, was not doing very well. I was extremely worried about her and uh, I constantly, nung nasa hospital siya talaga na medyo alanganin siya, I kept on telling her, Lola, hang in there, konti na lang, malapit ng Christmas, malapit ng holidays, pauwi na sila mga tito, pauwi na yung mga, mga apo mo, mga minamahal mo sa buhay, so... I just felt so, so good and I, I felt blessed that, you know, God gave us the opportunity to have someone as special and loving as her with us uh, during the uh, New Year celebrations. Uh, obviously, I'm sure many people also share that, um, uh, uh, you know, that, that sentiment, uh, you know, with respect to their loved ones, especially mga medyo may edad na, medyo may mga seniors na. So it's always, always, you know, something to cherish and not be taken for granted, no? Uh, and speaking of not taking things for granted, uh, mga kameta, thank you very much dun sa mga uh, nagpapadala ng support dahil uh, katulad ng pinost natin kanina dyan sa, um, sa Facebook. You know, for, for a lot of us, you know, um, hindi naman tayo, thankfully, we, ha- we don't have to worry about the basic things, no? Like, siguro pagkain, in terms of sleepers, in terms of... yung mga basic school supplies, especially yung mga pabalik na sa eskwela. But that's not the reality for, uh, para, sa lahat, para sa marami sa ating mga kababayan. I mean, I of course care so much for what's happening all around the world, for children of Ukraine, for children of Gaza, you know, for, for victims of heinous attacks and crimes, like what happened on October 7, for instance, last year. Uh, you know, our heart goes to Uh, to children especially all across the world but let's not forget there are also children in our own country no na nagira hanggang ngayon at uh, eto na pabalik na sa eskwela soon but you know wala silang mga pinaka basic so thank you so much dun sa mga nagpadala ng support and those you know any amount would do right you know ano bang minimum sa GCash 10 pesos that would do it's it's the expression of goodwill that that counts so uh that uh thanks dito sa at, uh, sa aking um colleague na si Dean June Uh, taga Mindanao po siya and and you know he has a number of uh, advocacies dun sa Mindanao especially dun sa mga uh, katutubo natin mga uh, mga kababayan at saka yung mga uh, yung mga kabataan dun sa mga very liblib na lugar talaga literal talaga medyo malayo sa quote and quote kabihasnan uh, in terms of logistics and infrastructure and all so just buying sleepers for them so just buying buying the basic uh, school, school supplies very important and then of course you know some Unfortunately, some of you mga ating mga kababayan also are, you know, suffering from afflictions. Very young kids, no? Um, from disabilities, afflictions and all. Um, and they live very far away from, from you know, the, the, the basic facilities that is needed. So, the least we can do is probably get them some, some vitamins, probably get them some, um, some basic nutritional materials. Or, I don't know, maybe down the road at least get, you know, some, I don't know, some... technology or something no something very basic para naman uh, makapag-aral sila and so that their parents and all could also provide them some sort of you know basic joys and li- of life and mobility and all so thank you very much again so you think po sa ating kanina you can just uh, press itong QR code dito at padala niyo dito and uh, of course 100% diretso ito doon sa sa ating uh, mga kaibigan 
um, who are in charge of this uh, outreach programs. One is the Manobo Children of Gomborza Elementary, Gomborza Elementary School, Tagbayagan, Rosario, Agusan del Sur. Actually, nagbigay na po kami um, just before, uh, uh, this is Christmas, no? so meron na kami outreach on Christmas, sleepers, toys, and school supplies. But of course, way more has to be done. Another one is the Manawa Children of uh, Habonga, Jabonga in Surigao del Norte naman. So thank you very much, Kai Dean June. Thank you so much, sir, for doing the leg work. Unfortunately, I couldn't join him this time because, of course, I'm dito tayo sa Baguio with family and loved ones. But in my own little ways, you know, I want to contribute to these efforts. Dahil as much as we care about, as I said, children from, from Ukraine to Gaza to, to Africa, etc., we have to also care about, you know, children who are suffering dito sa sarili natin bayan. Ang dami pang mahihirap sa ating bayan. Ang dami pang mga tao na yung pinaka mga basics wala pa sa kanila. Malaking bagay na may chinelas, malaking bagay na may basic na school supplies, malaking bagay na makapagbigay tayo ng mga vitamins or basic, uh, you know, health supplies, medicines, etc. Doon sa mga talagang may pangangailangan na at malayo doon sa mga lugar kung saan pwede sila makuha ng best possible health support. So these are these are the small things we're doing here and there. Of course, blessing yan from the Lord. Um, some of us have had the blessing to have at least be able to take care of yung mga pinaka-basics natin sa buhay. Some of us a little bit more privileged than others. But we have to share that, uh, even in the most humble way. So I really, really appreciate mga kameta. Yung QR code na post lang natin dyan, diretso yan dun sa mga, uh, sa mga kabataan. And of course, I will post updates as soon as we have new pictures and new reports about dito sa nangyala. So ito, uh, yeah, uh, mga ano natin, colleague ko yan sa UP. Okay, legit kami, alright? Hindi kami scammer. So, uh, so ako, syempre na-touch ako when nakita ko. But, you know, my contribution is very limited and how I wish I would be in a position to be there on the ground and to support. So, thank you very much a lot na mga nagpapadala ng support. So, I'm hoping na by tomorrow, medyo mapadala natin uh, itong mga new, um, whatever we can get, gather, no? Um, in the in the next 16 to 24 hours. Para early year pa lang, uh, meron ng mga tulong itong mga kabataan na ito para they can start the year on a fresh note, on a happy note with new sleepers, new school supplies, etc. That's, that's the least you can do, no? Uh, sa ating mga kababayan. And uh, yun nga yung sinasabi ko, eh. I mean, I care about events happening all around the world, but never take your eyes away from what is happening dun sa sarili natin, bayan, no? Marami pa rin uh, sa ating mga kababayan na napakahirap, no? And uh, definitely, of course, malalim ang gat ng problema, world or le- world ordeism, dynasties, corruption. We cannot solve those problems in the you know in the foreseeable future it will take time we have to push for reform step by step but in the meantime little help here and there uh could go a long way now speaking of things going a long way ito ito na ito na ito na mga um mga kamet mga kabataan mga kabataan naman tayo ito mga kamet ah ito na bagong taon pa lang medyo Medyo may pakulo na, no? May pakulo na. So, ito, salamat kay Sir Ivan. Uh, so, one of the things that, that really heartens me is that dumadami po yung mga um, quote-unquote political analysts no? sa ating bayan. Essentially, you know, young analysts, uh, Filipino scholars, Filipino activists, uh, Filipino um, concerned citizens, no? Uh, na may, may pakialam sa nangyari sa ating bayan, uh, na they're following news and the nuances of what's happening in our political landscape. Of course, doon tuwa po kami na marami sa inyo nakikinig sa amin uh, ni Ronald, nakikinig sa amin ni Mark, nakikinig sa amin ni Lisandro Claudio, among others, yung mga, mga kasabwat natin no? in terms of breaking down and analyzing yung mga pangyayari sa ating bayan. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very glad to see that nag-nurture po tayo ng ganitong kultura. No? Itong kultura ng critical thinking, itong kultura ng political analysis na hindi lang marites. Right? Because unfortunately, you know, for a long time, yung kwentong Barbero, Marites, yun ang naging basiyan ng political analysis. I mean, one of the things that always annoys me is, you know, people going to journalists to get political insights. Because ang, 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 ang inisip nila, oh, itong journalist, dahil kilala niya itong politiko na to, or dahil may Marites siyang ganito, mas valid yung kanang analysis. Let me tell you, mga kameta, of course, now, nowadays, of course, you know, more or less, I have connections with, you know, everyone that counts, right? Um, but that was not the case before. So back in the day when I didn't have much connection, I relied on my conceptual analytic skills. No, I, I relied on crowdsourcing, getting information here and there. I relied on, uh, you know, basic assumptions, you know, in game theory, for instance. And that allowed me to very much 
predict no where things would go hindi ko na makilala si Digong bago elections hindi ko na makilala yung mga tao in yung positions of power but we were able to predict a lot of the things including the direction of our foreign policy direction of his uh, policy etc through comparative analysis through conceptual analysis so eto yung parati kong pangarap no na magkakaroon tayo ng isang kultura kung saan hindi lang marites yung basihan no <laughs> ng ng political analysis you know there's there's a certain degree of rationality there's a certain degree of algorithmic iteration there's a certain degree of rational choice theory and also not so rational choice theory so ako parang game theory ang minsan ginagamit ko no to analyze um dynamics uh, pagdating sa politics, pagdating sa economics, pagdating sa international affairs. So I'm really glad. So kudos kay Sir Ivan and all of this young generation of analysts coming in and also doing their basic research. I mean, a lot of material you need, hindi mo kailangan maritas yan. You, it's available all over the place because, you know, we live in, in a time where everyone is signaling to everyone else. Everyone's using their social media platform, using media platforms. PR is very important. Public relations is very important, No. Communication is very important, no? Uh, and we live in the era of populism. Yet in one way or another, everyone is populist nowadays, no? It's about getting attention, getting the message out. So if you pay um, enough attention to the right signals, not the noise, you separate the signal from the noise, boom, medyo gets mo nasan papunta mga bagay-bagay. So, speaking of which, for almost a year po, pinag-usapan natin itong posibilidad na hindi lang magkakaroon ng conflagration sa loob ng unit team, but there could be quote unquote, a mini civil war. No, I don't mean it necessarily in civil war, like katulad ng nangyari sa you know, ancient Rome, you know, si Mark Antony versus Pompey versus uh, Caesar, Julius Caesar. Hindi naman sana ganun, di ba? But in a way, you know, we're crossing the Rubicon na. When I say we, not necessarily, you know, yours truly or you and I, but the people are in the positions of power. And the crossing of the Rubicon here is essentially allowing itong international criminal court to go after very, very senior officials from the former administration, right? Now, this is the thing that I and Ronald and some of other people have been saying for more than a year, right? Or at least have been harping on over the past five or six months. Uh, and it was a, you know, it was a kind of a hunch and increasingly a kind of an empirical observation. Because I know that the ICC has been here in the town. I've been posting about this. ICC is already here. So mukhang, eto na. Mukhang ito na. Mukhang na-notice na nung iba na the, the, the news is tightening at malapit na itong ICC. So, we have no less than former human rights lawyer, I'm sorry, former presidential spokesman, ex-presidential spokesman, Harry Roque. Ito na, may speech siya kanina. Uh, ito pa yung speech niya kanina. Pakinggan niyo, pinost ko naman doon sa baba. Eh. You can check it on your own. Medyo, ito na. I don't want to say it's panic. I don't want to say it's desperate. I don't want to say it's threatening. But, you know, it speaks for itself. Just just check it on your own. Mga kameta, may kita nyo, di ba? Ano mga uh, kalakaran dito sa ating bansa, di ba? Wait lang, ba't di ko ma-play? Mababatas na mababang uh, kapulungan. So, tingin ko, yan din ang mangyayari. Uh. Pero, si PBBM magdi-deny-deny. Hanggang gagalop. Ayan. Si PBBM magdi-deny-deny, di ba? Yun yung parating yung sinisabi. Conflict avoidance si BBM, so do not expect him to openly go there and declare war. But just because he's conflict avoidant in, ter- in terms of his temperament, it doesn't mean that he's not gonna necessarily go for the gold, right? Or go for jugular. So, but si Harry, Harry, aminado siya na uh, pagdating kay BBM, he's gonna be nice. He's gonna say nice things or he's not gonna give any indications. So, hindi siya katulad ni BB, ah, sorry, hindi siya katulad ni Duterte. Hindi rin siya katulad ni Aquino. Kasi both si Benigno Aquino at Duterte, ito yung mga presidente na talagang kung tingin nila kalaban ka, they're gonna declare war on you. No, So in the case of President Aquino declaring war on, you know, on Arroyo and yung mga kalaban niya, in the case of President Duterte declaring war on sa mga dilawan, etc. Ayan na si Noel, alam mo naman, bagong buhay ka na. New Year na, nag troll pa rin kaya. Ano yung mga trolls natin? Thank you. Pataas nyo yung mga engagements namin. Ang no, DOJ, makikipagtulungan, gagalaw ang pulisya kapag nagkaroon ng warrant of arrest at isoserve yan. Baka hindi lang si FBI RD. Yan, so, essentially sinasabi niya na itong uh, si President BBM, you're not gonna see indications from him, pero parang pwede, ano, slowly, the wheels of bureaucracy will take care of everything else. And... Hindi kay, pipisara na rin. Pag nangyari po talaga yan, gulo. Hindi ko po 
sinasabi na magkagulo tayo. Ang sinasabi ko lang, pag yan ay nangyari, talagang magkakagulo. Wait. Ang tingin ko, kung si... Wait, di ko na-gets. Ano ba talaga? Magkakagulo or hindi magkakagulo, di ba? Pero ito yung importante, ha? yung sinabi ni Harry dito na Potentially, hindi lang si Rodrigo Duterte, but even the number two, the current, yung kasalang ko yan, the number two, could be also on the list. Now, I'm not sure where he's getting his information, but this is not totally out of, you know, out of the blue, and this is not totally out of the realm of possibility dahil nakita natin dun sa Vera Files report, among others, na hindi lang si Digong, potentially four or five very, very high-level officials, including some senators, could be on the list of yung mga investigate ng ISIS. Pero ito lang yung part ng... Magkagulo tayo. Ang sinasabi... Hindi niya sinasabi na magkakagulo tayo, para magkakagulo tayo, para hindi niya sinasabi anong klase ng magkakagulo. So, eh, bahala kayo, makinig. Wait lang. Wait lang natin. Sorry, may na yung internet natin. Ay, hindi, hindi, actually, na-download ko ba ito? Ay, hindi, nandun kasi sa isang phone ko yun, sorry. Gulo. Hindi ko po sinasabi. Gulo, para hindi niya sinasabi ng gulo. Ang sinasabi ko lang, pag yan ay nangyari, talagang magkakagulo. Oh, ano ba talaga? Ano ba? Magulo? Mag, 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 hindi, mag, para medyo magulo. Wala nang suporta ang taong bayan kay PRRD, ay eh, nagkakamali sila. <laughs> Kasi nga kahit anong bit, iba ito nila kay, kay uh, Inday Sara, yes, bumaba ng bahagya ang uh, trust at popularity rating ni Inday Sara, pero pinakamataas pa rin siya sa lahat ng tao yeah, sa gobyerno. Sa no? Kanya. No? So sa tingin ko, magkakamali sila no? kung ang tingin nila ay wala nang suporta ang taong bayan aalma ang taong bayan. At kaya nga ang hinaharap niya para nagtutugma dun sa sinasabi ng Feng Shui. Kapag itong pagtutulungan nito mangyari sa mga more... Aba, 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 may mga ano pa si ano ha? Ibang klase ha? Wait, wait, I mean, let's, let's see what he's doing here. Again, you, you mentioned yung popularity numbers and all of that. Now, as I said, you know, popularity numbers are useless unless this is backed by mobilization. This is backed by organization, right? Of course, during elections, blah, blah, blah. Yes, popular, of course, matters. It's not totally worthless. But when you're looking at very, very, uh, you know, essential existential situations, this is about mobilization power. This is about having vectors of influence dun sa ating mga iba't ibang bahagi na ating state institutions, sa mga political parties, etc. So, I'm not sure this argument of, yeah, I mean, popular mga Duterte, no question about it. But ang, ang tanong is, anong kinalaman nito? So, so, kung popular ka, hindi ka pwedeng ano yun, at all, even if there's a clear evidence. I mean, gets mo? And, and kung ang kalaban mo yung administrasyon, yung gobyerno, na meron din ang mataas ng popularity, but more importantly, meron din resources and the mandate, yung mandato ng, ng Estado ay sa kanila, then I'm not sure how this argument flies. But yun nga, yung para, what is it? Is this kind of a threat, but not a threat? Mangyari na hindi mangyari? So, what, what are you trying to say here? Diba? Yung second part ng taon, so, ano naman ang hinaharap ni Inday Sara? Well, syempre, ang kapalaran ni Inday Sara depende rin sa mga hakbang na gagawin ni PBBM. Kung talagang makikipagtulungan para mapadala at mapakulong ang Inday Sara at FPRRD sa dahig, natural, anong gagawin ng magkama? Ayaw nga lang man sabihin nilang, we love you, PBBM. <laughs> aalma at aalma rin yan. At sigurado na nandyan yung kanilang mga tagasunod, yung kanilang mga supporters, at syempre, hindi naman po pwedeng uupo lang sila at babaw sa gusto na mangyari ng uh, administrasyon. Mambabata sa mababa. Yan. So, mababa interesting guys. Sorry, medyo... So, tingin ko... Yeah, 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 conscious yeah. also. Pero, Sorry. Sorry. Ayan. So, ito ha. Very interesting. So, there are a couple of things being said here. First of all, as far as President Bongbong Marcos is concerned, don't expect him to go out there guns blazing. So, expect this to be a bureaucratic slow burn or not so slow burn anymore strategy na quietly papano niya yung mga nandun sa baba to do the deal. But the other important thing here is ang sinasabi dito is dahil popular pa rin mga Dutertes at uh, dahil medyo alam nila na nangyari, they're not just gonna sit idly by. Pero wala naman daw gulo mangyari pero pwede mangyari ang gulo pero hindi niya sasabihin ko anong klaseng gulo pwede mangyari. So, so this was a kind of an interesting um uh, intervention by the ex-human, I'm sorry, ex-presidential spokesman uh, kung saan sinasabi niya na alam namin ang nangyayari ngayon, meron silang information about the direction of um, things, diba? the trajectory of our political situation. At sinasabi niya, 
we're not, potentially we're not gonna sit idly by kasi alam naman natin ano yung allegiance niya di ba uh, hindi naman sa estado natin uh, the, you know um so so let's see so is this kind of a warning shot at a by isang shot across the bow uh, you know essentially telling uh, the powers that be na ingat kayo na malakas pa rin kami na popular pa rin kami and we have the information but you know the interesting thing is that parang may admission na potentially hindi lang si Digong but even the vice president could be uh could be ensnared uh by this no uh, even the term Hague was mentioned and the idea that they're just going to sit idly by and they're just going to welcome and accept it with fatalism hindi mangyayari yan so very interesting this is very interesting i think there's so many things happening so i really suggest you guys i'll post the link go there and watch it on your own the whole video Malay nyo ba? Gusto nyo rin mag-subscribe sa kanyang podcast. Ayan. Para may competition naman kami ni Christian Esguera. Kami dalawa lang yata nagkakompete dyan sa political news and ano, sa podcast sa Philippines. Eh. Although alam nyo naman mga kamet. At tayo naman, uh, you know, we're always trying to compete globally, right? That was always my thing. But anyway, um, the more the the merrier. So please, uh, go and check out the YouTube link. I'll, I'll, I'll send the link to you guys. Watch the whole thing. I just showed to you guys the highlights part, yung pinaka-important part, uh, pinaka-importante uh, mga segments na I think gives you some idea about ano yung mga klaseng internal conversations na meron sa kampo ng mga digong. No? Kampo nila digong at mga Duterte. Like, what, are, what is the state of mind? What is the state of discussion there? And eto na. Um, you know, you have some of them, they're impresarios, essentially, kind of, Shot across the pow, kind of, you know, threatening na baka magkaroon ng gulo. Pero hindi ko sinasabi na magkaroon ng gulo, pero pwede magkaroon ng gulo, di ba? Yung ganoon, di ba? So, ako naman, ako naman, ang sinasabi ko dito is, pagdating nga naman kay BBM, uh, he's a he's a conflict avoidant person in, in a sense, hindi, this is not gonna go demagogical, go there and threaten people right and left. Pero hindi rin mahina mag-isip yan si BBM pagdating sa politika. Smooth operator yan. So if they're gonna this if there's gonna be a move and a move is already happening in certain sense in the sense that andito ng ICC nag investigate na sila it's a matter of formality of warrant of arrest etc. Uh, then I'm sure CBBM si and you know his 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 deputies and lieutenants they're making also the necessary preparations and all of that right so tignan natin yan mga kameta. so 2024 could be a very very big year not only for President Marcos Jr. not only for the Duterte's but for for the Filipino Republic. No? Because libong-libong mga Pilipino, karamihan sa kanila, vast majority of whom, pinakamahirap na po yung Pilipino, ang namatay, di ba? Maraming kabataan namatay, more than 100, base sa mga reports na meron tayo. This has been one of the darkest episodes in our history. And and yeah, sadly, it's true na maraming sumuporta dun sa drug war dun sa una. But if you also look at the service, marami nagsasabi na natakot din sila, na baka madamay din sila. So there was always always a climate of fear. This was never an unconditional 100% support. And the fact na si Digong ngayon dun sa service for the Senate is getting preference rating of just over 40%. That shows that he's not as popular and powerful as before, right? And as I said, uh, approval ratings, surveys, whatever, is also about power. It's also about resources. It's also about mobilization skills. It's also about international support. And guess what? As far as those things are concerned, PBM is the far more powerful actor here, even if he's, he's the conflict avoidant one. So don't also underestimate BBM. BBM could do big things this year. And as I, I argued last year, should the ICC issue push forward, this will be the most consequential development in Philippine politics for the foreseeable future because it could trigger a very, very uh, harsh backlash from certain section, but it could also bring a lot of support from a lot of people internationally and locally for BBM, which would be very ironic that this, you know, that the namesake son of the former Filipino dictator could potentially oversee one of the biggest accountability uh, and judicial, um, judicial accountability moves, not only in Philippine history, but in Asian history. Wala pang, pagdating sa ICC, alam natin, napakabagal ng ICC, Napakadami mga limitations ng ICC. But the ICC has not gone after an Asian leader yet. So if ever this happens, this is going to be a very, very big thing. Very, very big thing. So the fact that this could happen under Marcos Jr. is crazy. Now, I'm not going to hold my breath because at the end of the day, alam natin, pagdating sa Pilipinas, we're still not in a situation of rule of law. We are moving in the right directions. Kudos to the current administration. I mean, the situation with Maria Ressa, the situation with... 
uh, Leila de Lima, but we still have tens of thousands of unresolved cases you know, of potential miscarriage of justice or extrajudicial uh, actions. You know? uh, so, tignan natin what's going to happen on that front. But it's, it's interesting that this early in the year, right, January 1 pa lang, may manaykita na tayong ganito mga interventions no? by no less than the ex human rights, I'm sorry, ex presidential spokesman. No? So, this is quite interesting. And let's, uh, you know, let's watch out. Let's see where this is gonna go. Very interesting ito, mga kameta. Again, thank you very much sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta sa atin. Thank you very much also dun sa mga sumusuporta at uh, nagpapadala ng support dito sa uh, mga outreach programs natin, especially dun sa mga ating mga kabayan na maminmahal natin sa mga kabayan sa Mindanao among other places. As I said, uh, meron kaming mga lit na mga outreach program with my colleagues, si Dean June. Uh, kami po yung mga taga-UP, kaibigan po kami na matagal. Si Dean po, uh, taga Mindanao po siya. So, meron siyang mga um, outreach programs dito sa Mindanao, sa mga, uh, you know, sa marginalized communities, sa indigenous peoples, yung mga ganun na yung outreach niya. So, again, thank you so much sa lahat ng mga nagpapadala ng support. Kahit 10 pesos, 5 pesos, whatever. We really appreciate it, mga kameta. So, ito, Manubo Children of Gomboza Elementary, dun sa Tagbayagan, Rosario, Acusan del Sur. Uh, meron na kaming nagawang outreach uh, during Christmas, sleepers toys, uh, and school supplies, but we're hoping to do more there. Uh, importantly, yung sa uh, Mananwa Children of Habonga, Surigao del Norte, yun naman uh, next natin sana punta na tuluan. Of course, personally, I cannot be there because I'm here in the in the north, far north, but in my own little ways, I'm trying to to also help and facilitate uh, people who want to, to be of little help here and there. And of course, as soon as uh, na-distribute po namin itong mga supplies and, and mga help na ito, uh, i-update, i-upload po namin yung mga pictures, etc. So, thank you very much, uh, mga kameta. Maraming salamat for fantastic support in 2023. So, God willing, inshallah, thank you so much, mga kameta. Sana you also support us even more this year. We have been doing very well, especially on YouTube. Thank God, uh, our numbers are unprecedented, the highest numbers we have had ever. So I hope, God willing, this is just the beginning of even more proactive interaction dito sa YouTube among others. Facebook naman, yes, we had our heyday during last year's election, uh, last year's elections. Well, last last year's elections is already 2024, right? During last last year's elections, of course. But uh, hopefully as we get closer to 2025, we can get the Facebook also going. In the meantime, I'm also working on TikTok. Hopefully we can have more... Um, Interactions also in TikTok. Yung mga pinos natin. Alam mo yung mga ginagawa ko, mekos-mekos na split screen. Mukhang medyo may, medyo may pag-asa ito pagdating sa TikTok. Doing pretty well here. Uh, we want to do well. In fact, napansin ko even on Instagram, they're doing very well. Um, yung mga ganitong type ng, you know. You know, sometimes when when politicians and trapos are just so ridiculous, you, you, it's not they're not even worth dignifying through conceptual analysis or, uh, you know, cognitive intervention, right? You just have to, like, you know, just some basic acting, you know, and some reaction could, you know, says everything. I mean, it speaks for itself, right? Thank you very much again sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta sa atin, sa lahat ng mga atikain natin, sa lahat ng mga, uh, yung mga paniniwala natin, mga panindigan natin. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, mga kameta. And uh, yes, don't worry. Popost ko yung mga videos na ginawa namin ni Ronald Niamas. Uh, di ko pa na-post sa Facebook. Meron na dyan sa YouTube. So please go to my YouTube channel. Halos lahat na upload natin immediately there. Uh, although I have to upload yata yung ginawa kong isang day dito naman sa YouTube. Um, but I make sure at least on YouTube everything is uploaded. And then also, of course, uh, we hope to have, we get the ball rolling to start the year also with yung mga paborito yung shows, r and among others. So we can have more of analysis of that. And as I promised, I'm also working on something new here and there, more than one. Uh, one of them is actually this kind of long lectures, long form lectures, kind of kind of a master class ish. I know it sounds pretentious and all, but you know, there's some effort and scholarship that goes into that. So in edit, edit ko pa yan ako mismo, all right? Because this, you know, these these are my lectures, so I I take care of them. I don't ako mismo magedit. It's taking a little bit time, major effort yan, but uh, also, uh, you know, stay tuned for those ones, the mini lecture series. All right, thank you very much. God bless, and talk to you soon. Maraming salamat.